Thank you, everyone. I'll, um, I'll make this quite short. First and foremost, there have been some fantastic um, topics and themes um, over the last few hours. Um, it's quite inspiring and innovative. It was nice, actually, from being from the northwest. It's nice to think that um, the Manchester Metro Link has been mentioned so many times, and that's great because uh, it really is a good system and it's fantastic. Just very quickly, I was down Salford Keys only for uh, two or three months ago and the impact that I'm sure, I believe, that the tram is making out there, both socially and economically, is fantastic. Um, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, in the evening, uh, you know, off peak time, full, standing room only, and you look down and the, the restaurants and the leisure that's opened up down there, um, I'm sure, that uh, the, the tram system has certainly, in, in what some ways, uh, has, has contributed to that development and, uh, and it's great to see, absolutely. So to, to introduce myself, uh, I'm Mark Bentley, I'm the Director for Logistics and Supply Chain here at South East College. And in essence, any provision, any training, development and the strategy to support the, um, the uh, industry, um, then that comes under my domain here. Uh, at the moment, I seem to be tied up every waking day with the, uh, the driver shortage. Um, it's getting very, very serious and uh, there's a lot of demands upon us at the moment to, to try and uh, look after that to and try and do what we can and find solutions. So, um, just to kick on, I'm glad that's happened because that shows there's no favouritism. <laughs> no fav Thank you guys. Uh, now let's get back on track. Let's, let's get back to where we should be. Okay. Um, there's, there's two elements uh, where we're loading out. There's two elements that I kind of want to touch on today. Um, and we talk about this fantastic idea about um, the trams. Um, I'm just blown away with it, kind of. So, um, and um, one thing we're going to think of, we're going to think of well, what about skills? Okay, We're going to set a tram system up. We are going to, ongoingly for sustainability, we're going to want people who can actually drive the trams or be involved in the, the infrastructure, the software and so on and so forth. And, and uh, we, uh, security was mentioned as well. And there's so many things. But the question is everywhere I go on, I spend most of my time in the industry. It's all, thank you. Um, it's all about skill shortage. Skills, we haven't got this, we haven't got that. And I keep hearing it all the time and we start thinking, well, you know, we need to really take the skills agenda very serious. And I find that the majority of the work that I do, it's all in relation to what about the skill shortage across a number of supply chain and logistic uh, and, and, uh, elements, if you will. So just quickly to introduce yourself, um, South Essex College, we, we kind of describe yourself that we are based along the Thames Corridor from, this is the furthest point, uh, going down to, uh, including going in, uh, inland a wee bit, Basildon, we have an engineering campus. Um, I and engineering, advanced engineering. We've also got a new campus for digital, and we recognise on the uh, those hop on movies just a, foot, a moment ago that digital is, is is the key thing and moving forward. We have a, a radically different change. We've got the backstage centre, which we're very proud to be involved with um, down at Perfleet. Absolutely a stunning location and very very influential in the uh, performing arts education kind of space. And uh, we're in third, obviously, and we've got South End, which is the kind of the mothership originally, but I'm not really sure now. It seems to be quite fragmented. So, um, what do we do? If anybody asks me a question, what, what do colleges do? And, and, and I kind of basically say, well, we uh, develop um, as local skills, local people for local jobs. And in essence, that, that's what a college is. And this behind has given us some idea of what we are working on at the moment, some of the, the infrastructure projects. We have got the Lower Thames Crossing, um, basically we're kind of at stop start and we're not sure where it's going but they've come to us with a, if you will, a heat map to show where there's skills gaps and so on and so forth. Clearly it's, uh, it's very significant, it will be moving forward. Uh, Thames Freeport, uh, that's a new, um, a new award back in February, again we're just waiting to find out what skills are going to be required within this Freeport or this enterprise zone. Um, it's going to be certainly going to be about advanced engineering skills. Um, a small kind of industrial park that is going to be developed enterprise zone just the other side of DP World, probably the furthest point I would think of the Freeport is uh, the uh, Thames Enterprise Park um, on the former oil refinery and it's looking at very much around clean energy and so on and so forth. So again, what skills do you want uh, uh, the uh, uh, Thames Enterprise Park? What are you looking for? What's your future? What's your demands? Uh, Kenex 
Um, I've been very fortunate and honoured to be working alongside Gordon for some two or three years now and we're there to uh, be ready to support any skills that's going to be required for the Kennet SRAM uh, system. And finally, um, it's kind of, we've got Brexit, we have the COVID recovery and we've also got obviously Industry 4.0. There's a lot of things going on within the skills agenda for industry that is going to become more and more key and it is important that South Essex College and any other college come to that. It's there to support businesses moving forward. We play a very, very, or have the potential to play a very key role. Um, okay. well, um, next one, please. There we go. So, creating a future. Um, we, we are there to help the infrastructure, to, to help build the skills so contractors and projects like the, uh, the Kennex or uh, light railway projects around the country that we're servicing that skills need. Um, young people, we're looking for to get them into these projects, you know, to inspire them. Can I say now, looking at trying to look through a, a young person's eyes, at those up on, vi uh, uh, up on uh, videos, um, that's remarkable, it's quite innovative, it's kind of really catchy. And I know, because I, I, I deal with youngsters, I know that if I played that, okay, in, in some of these, these classes that we take, you'd say, Mark, how can I get into this? They're very inspirational videos, and I, and I think when we look at that, yeah, they are there, but we've got to be able to make sure we've got the work experiences and job opportunities and careers. Because we talk very, very early in the process about what careers, what can get them into, and make sure they've got something to really aim for, and that's key at education, particularly at our level. Um, lifelong learning. Um, again, this is something that is, we hear quite a lot of it, lifelong learning. What does it really mean? It means, going back to the previous slide, there is going to be quite some remarkable transformation. Uh, I think it was uh, Klaus Schwab um, said something down the lines of, if you can imagine the future, you haven't gone far enough. Okay? If you can imagine the future, you haven't gone far enough. To give you some idea of the scale of change and transformation, that, that's quite scary. Because we've got to bring people along with us and we've got to make sure we're de developing the skills that they can really still engage with things and have a future and have a career. And that's absolutely key. So um, we have to think about upskilling and people that are currently in employment, there's going to be some remarkable change and we know digital particularly is an issue. Um, DUOP, um, the Department of Work and Pensions, again we work with some of the unemployed and we're finding that the unemployed at the moment is a different profile, some are coming to the party unemployed with some very, very key skills and are very employable. And it's just making sure we make that change, that career change and get them into, into work. And also, um, some of these infrastructure pro projects that kind of come along, they get implemented and go, it's making sure that they leave a legacy uh, of what they leave behind. And that leaves uh, behind, obviously, jobs and opportunities for growth for individuals. So we are kind of very pivotal to those kind of things within FE, uh, FE College uh, um, locations. So, skills for job. This was um, a white paper. I, 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 I uh, was in discussion earlier uh, today about this, this paper. This is a, a new white paper from the government. Um, some people might say there's quite a lot of rhetoric there. I think it, it couches itself, or it positions itself actually as being, uh, it says evolutionary. Um, I, I, I disagree. I think it's, it, it's quite, um, it, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, piece of uh, early legislation or potentially. It's a game changer. It's very much around um, stating the policy from the DfE for the future, for skills, for development, concentrating on one of the highest skills, level four, level five, and not a, there's a very clear that in the UK there is a big mass kind of void there for people with level four, level five skills, and for people not in education, they can look for a guide, level four, level five, or kind of the first and second year of a degree programme, and particularly in the STEM area, and it's a, a, a situation that the government through this white paper is hopefully going to try and kind of close that and, and do something about it. Um, as it said there, level four to level six. And also, um, an institute of technology concept. Uh, the first um, range was launched possibly two years ago now, and it was to concentrate on these level four to level six skills, where there are particular areas in industry that need those skills. And I'm sure we will remember, it sounds very similar to the old technical colleges. If you can remember, the technical colleges were set up locally to actually provide for the local industry. As I said, I'm, I'm from the Northwest, and in the Northwest, it would have been the uh, local colleges would have dealt with the textile industry. 
if it was in Northampton, no doubt it would be the uh, shoe making industry and so on and so forth. They had that local connection for local jobs. The IoT concept is very much going back to that kind of concept, basically. And we have the uh, creation, this paper suggests the creation of a, an LSIC, local skills improvement plans, to really drill down and connect with industry to find out what industry wants and how we can change curriculum to encourage people to come in and engage with that, this kind of new industry, these new skills, and then go forward into industry and be the uh, employees of the future. And uh, clearly digital skills, uh, additive engineering, robotics uh, and automation are going to be all key. That's fine, but have we got people that can actually do that and, and engage with it and are not too techno-phobia about it? It just didn't really think that way through, but we have to do now and make sure that we're developing those skills and confidences actually here in a college environment. And it's not just young people, it's people of an age as well who have really got to change the way that they um, adapt the way they work and so on and so forth and keep themselves within the labour market. So it's a very, very big agenda. Um, so that's basically um, the, the main message is this skills agenda. So any projects, any big projects that, that, that's out there, we have to be involved with to develop the skills and make sure that young people particularly are engaged with that uh, because they deserve to have a future. And when we see projects of tram light railway, but certainly here in, in our local area, the Kennex, we really believe that that's going to give uh, not just a big boost to the economy, which is, is tenfold, but it's also going to do something from an educational perspective and also innovative for young people as well. So work, South Essex College are very much behind the Kennex program and any other tram systems and something that's bringing new technology and sustainability in the way it is uh, as a mode of transport. So thank you so much indeed. Um, and anyone else to talk about education skills, please get in touch. Thank you so much.